Hi and welcome to this video. Now today I'm doing something a little bit different to what I normally do on the channel and today I'm going to do a review of my wife's car which is this Kia Soul uh, Phase 1. Now the reason I'm doing this is because over the last few months I know a few friends of mine have been looking for cheap runarounds and basically I know this car gets overlooked quite somewhat because of its styling and its reputation and basically I want to try and change that. So if you have a look on a Facebook Market Page and eBay and Auto Trader, that type of thing, you can actually pick up these cars, the Mark 1s, uh, from around sort of £1,500, up to about 4000 before they start changing and getting newer. So I want to ask the question, are these cars worth paying you know, the £1,500 there around, you know, as a, a cheap one around, whether you're looking for one for the year or, you know, maybe, you know, a lot longer? So in America, they were very popular, um, you know, they sold millions of them and still are today. In the UK, they didn't sell that many, uh, from what I believe. You know, they weren't as popular. I think their reputation was somewhat not as good as other makes of cars. Uh, but basically, we bought this one because we wanted a cheap run around and we've kept it ever since. So as I say, these cars have been going for quite some time. I'm going to be using this one, uh, my wife's car, as the example today. Now, one benefit of me doing this review is that previously we've had the diesel version as well, which is a 1.6 diesel uh, burner. I'll put photos on as I go along. So as I say, that one's a diesel and this one is a petrol. So I'll go with uh, you know, what the car's like in general and then I'll go over engines and you know, drivability and that type of thing. We've owned this car now for about three years and literally all I've done on it is replace the battery, uh, replace some drop links and service it. Now these are all you know, consumable items which you would do on any car really um, and there's nothing which you know, has gone major with this car. So this is the reason I'm asking the question, is this car, the Mark 1 Kia Soul, worth buying in 2024? So bear in mind, this is the last car, it's the child car, so it's got stuff all over, so please bear that in mind, but obviously we'll try and have a look at the car and just show you around a bit. So the styling outside is somewhat rather boxy, but somewhat sleek. You know, it's got a few curves here and there. It's actually what I think I consider to be the start of the SUV phase, as in it's got a, a bit of height compared to other cars. So this helps with the 18-inch alloys that it also comes with. If you work your way around, this is obviously a five door, which does help. Now on the back seat, you know, I do have the child seat, but like my Focus and many other cars, you know, I'm six foot odd. I have the driver's seat all the way back and you can see that there is not a lot of space to be fair, but I wouldn't say there's any less than, you know, my Mark III Focus. So with this car being quite tall as well, uh, you may see as well in the video uh, where I'm sat at the moment, there's plenty of height room, you know, for a driver that's quite tall. And as you can see, the roof kind of goes upwards in the back there. So there's even more room you know, for the tall person in the back as well. So moving around to the boot, this is where the Kia does struggle a little bit if you're looking for a bigger car. I would say the boot's not massive. So as you can see at the moment, there's lots of dog blankets in the back as this is where we put the dogs. But there is an actual false floor that goes here. So if you're looking for that bit of an extra room, you can take this out like we've done. And that's just where the spare tire and everything's kept. So you gain a few more inches of you know, the depth in the boot. But obviously there's plenty of space you know, to put dogs in there and you know, bits of shopping. Or you know, twin subs if that's the type of thing that you're looking for as well. So moving on to the inside, the driver area. So as I say, there's different models of this car. The diesel version that we had, I think it was the burner, came with a red interior, which was quite bright. Uh, and also came with an uprated speaker system with a sub in the boot and the speaker in the center dash, right at the top. Also, it had flashy lights where you could make the speakers flash up red as well. So this one is a bit of a lesser model. It doesn't have the speaker on the dash at the front. Uh, it doesn't have the sub and the speakers don't flash as well. Now, the actual drivability or layout of the, the steering wheel in front of me, uh, it's quite good to be fair. As I, I feel like I'm sat quite high up. Uh, all the dials and everything are within view and you know, easy to understand. And with me being quite high up as well, I can actually see the bonnet, you know, how far it goes, which makes it a little bit easier to drive. Now, one thing that I would say with this car, like many cars, is that when you're, this car doesn't have reversing sensors, 
so when you're reversing one thing I will say is this car has quite a big blind spot and what I mean by that is the area that's behind you can see that goes from the back window to the side window it's quite a wide area so if you're reversing then you've got quite a wide you know you've got quite a wide section where you can't see so quickly moving on to the engine so it's a 1.6 petrol I will say it is fairly nippy you know it, it does it does move but I will say when you get it on a motorway it does lack that top end power So with the diesel version, the burner that we had, that is also 125 brake. Although I think the diesel version, from experience, it feels a bit more solid than what this car, what this engine does. This engine, it is pretty quiet, I'll give you that, but it feels a bit, a bit weak. And that's the best way to put it. I will say that the accelerator pedal is very, very sensitive. Like you sneeze on it and the revs will shoot up. Uh, the steering's light, uh, as I say you've got a good view all around and you've got sunroof and everything. You know, the, drive, the driving experience of this car is quite good. However, in both cars I did feel that with it being high up as well, it felt a little bit like on stilts and that the, there's too much body roll, I think. It didn't feel like it was stable enough. When you go over potholes, so I don't know whether it's just this car, whether there's something wrong with the subframe bushes, but it kind of feels like it's not connected in some way. However, both engines are train driven. So if you are looking into buying one of these, then that's something that you don't have to worry about unless they're noisy. Uh, chain engines, as you know, can last up to 150,000, 200,000 if they're looked after and serviced regularly. So the engine, as I have serviced, every year if I had literally nothing go wrong with it it really is quite a good car now what I will point out is obviously these cars are somewhat you know getting on a bit so they do have their issues now the good thing with these cars is even though they're 10 years old the only things I found that have gone wrong with this car is that the alloys have started to corrode a bit again you're probably going to get that on any car the is a tiny little bit of rust down at the bottom just uh, behind the rear wheel just on the sill again it's to be expected you know it's an old car but there's not that much rust on it compared to you know other cars of this age you know it's done somewhat quite well now obviously one thing to watch as well which is quite common this car i say it does have a reversing camera however it is common that they do fail now what's meant to happen is it's meant to show on the rear view mirror and that doesn't show so sometimes it's either the wiring or the actual camera that goes now the camera on the boot, this is uh, renowned for getting water in it, and this is what kills the camera. And a replacement of one of these, you're probably looking about £100, so it's not the cheapest. So like ours that stopped working, this is one of the reasons why I've not repaired it. You can get aftermarket parts and repair it that way, that is a, a possibility, but it's something that I've not uh, locked into. Also with the camera, the cover that covers the camera, as you probably noticed on the outside pictures, they do have a tendency to come off as well. So I actually do have the cap with me, it's just here. <laughs> so at some point I'm just going to try and glue that back on. I have decided I'm not going to replace the camera because we've been you know, using the car so long now without it so we've just got used to not using it. So yeah basically if you're looking for a car as an example this one has done 72,000 and we actually picked it up with it doing about 58. Now this is what I don't get really why the, they're not holding the price. Uh, I looked on Auto Trader the other day and I found one for just short of 2000 I think it was about £800, and it was the same model as this, you know, although a different colour, and it had done about 72000 you know, similar mileage, and it looked in great nick, but it was cheap. So I don't get why they are so cheap, but I would say that these cars are still worth buying in 2024 if you're looking for a runaround or something more. So yeah, it might not do your street cred you know that much good here in the UK you know it's different in America but yeah it, if you're looking for a cheap runaround that's somewhat reliable then these are definitely something to consider so yeah I hope this video has been useful really in you know give my quick review on this car uh, I'm not going out for a drive in it because I didn't see the point in driving trying to talk at the same time I thought it'd just be easy to explain but if you're looking for a cheap reliable car 
and you know sometimes you get lemons sometimes you get better ones it's just the way it is but if you're lucky enough to get one that's been looked after you know i don't see why this car could last you know it could last you a year or it, i don't see why it can't last you a good few years uh, so long as you look after it so i say i hope this video has been useful so if you're looking to buy one or if you've owned one uh, leave your comments down below let me know on your experiences and i'll see you in the next video